All right, guys. So this is a video that that will be technically broken up into uh, multiple parts. Um, um, this is really going to focus on the next win raid that will be coming out in the coming days, October thirty first. And at the time of recording this, it's the twenty eighth. So I'll be able to get out three of the five videos I have in mind before the raid comes out. So, so for these, uh, firstly, I'm going to be talk um, for these five videos, I should say, I will be talking about what, really what units you should be preparing for this raid, and which ones will honestly have higher value than others. The ones who have the most value, I'll be pushing that stuff out first. For example, this one, in case if, in case if, uh, you read uh, the title. This one will be focusing on uh, on the damage. These these units will be the main units you will be using in order to deal damage against uh, the boss. But then like a but, but then like a next video, I could be talking about healers or or dragon haste, anything along those lines. So I really do hope uh, you guys uh, enjoy these videos. I really do hope that I do these videos more often because it gives me an excuse to. To, to make these and also be very informative about where this unit falls in in a team and also potentially how to make a team as well which is another reason why I kind of um broke these up because well you should roughly have one unit from each of these lists depending on their abilities co-abilities uh, their purpose you should try and have one of each unit roughly on a team that that fulfills that role. That's how I've seen teams being built and such. So now that I've talked on enough, let's uh, let us begin. So we'll be starting off with the best DPS unit for fire at the moment in, in the game. Just if just if uh, you pull this unit, you probably don't even need to pull on a, on another fire banner for honestly a very good while. This unit is just stupid powerful. This unit kind of works similar to the Halloween Ellie San, but his phases are timer based. Uh, phase one, for example, you have 20 seconds under under that buff, and the buff is user strength and skills are powered up by 10%. You have, I believe, um, I haven't used him, I don't own him, so I can't tell you exactly how this works, but I believe after 20 seconds, uh, that buff runs out, and Phase 1 might reset, I don't know, but if it doesn't, then it will work exactly like how Halloween Ellie Sand. Phase 1, Phase 2, fa Phase 3, then it goes back down to Phase 1. And Phase 2 over here um, activates Ruin Stance for 15 seconds, and User Strength and Skills are powered up by 15%. And, and one thing to note, um, between Phase 1, Phase 2, and Phase 3, uh, the power does does begin to weaken uh, between them. So Phase 1 will be your most powerful one. Phase 2 will be your second most powerful. Phase 3 will be a little bit an under, under everything else. Speaking of Phase 3, um, 4 hits of damage directly ahead. Final hit being, being almost a nuke and... And the phase ends right there. And, and no additional buffs follow. That in itself uh, makes him very good because because he can boost his strength and and, and his power. But but then his second move increases user attack rate by 15-20% for 10 seconds. This means this means that this man can attack crazy fast and katanas as is, they attack pretty fast in general. So so this man will be collecting. SP very quickly, so those like 20, 15 second requirements, th those will be nothing for him. You simply need to pl you simply need to uh, uh play him correctly. But then <laughs> that that's not even at the end of it. Um, his abilities increases crit rate by eight or ten percent when he is seventy percent or above. That in general is it's nice, but just simply try and keep above a uh, seventy percent once again. Uh, just if you know how to play him well, that will not be an issue. Uh, reduces chance of stun, 1500%. And that won't be good for the upcoming raid because it's been leaked that it might cause sleep. 
This next raid might cause sleep, so that stun chance is pretty much worthless. And increases, and last one is increased crit rate by 6 or 8%. That is still very good be, be, because that is a set gain. That's a set gain, and it's it's honestly it's honestly nice be, because crits. Oh my god, Jesus Christ! Imagine this guy getting crit. But then, uh, then co ability he he increases strength. Anyone that increases strength as a co ability is very good because those will be very very reliable in powering up other units on that team. That's just amazing. But then. But then he has a pretty good HP stat and the attack stat. That's the highest attack stat uh, the fire attribute has to offer, which is even more reason why he's just absolutely stupid broken. And and well, by the way, uh, these stats these are five star max level, no mana circle. So so obviously these would seem a little weaker than of what you guys are normally used to, because because it's not mana circled, not altered buffed, not um, dojo buffed. No, that's buffed. It's just their raw stats outright. Just their raw stats. So so to time off, um, DPS unit. Try and use him in, in the win raid. Uh, just if you have him. Uh, just if you don't, don't worry. Um, there are still more DPS units in this list that can that are still very very good. Let's move on to the next one, which is Ezileth, Genius of the Century. E Ezileth was on was the first featured raid up unit on the very first banner since since day one un until the until the fire raid dropped. Most people should have her just if uh, you reroll for her. Most people should have her. Just if just if you do, work her up. She is your second best option for this raid. Not only that, she actually serves two roles, because one thing that everyone has learned from the from the um, fire raid is that anyone that that reduces defense is invaluable. They are very valuable because they because they can make you clear the one minute objective for that raid. Not only does she have that, but she can double as a very good DPS unit. Because she's a dagger unit, because she's a dagger unit, she can attack very quickly. And I mean very quickly. Uh, just if Mikoto's um, second skill was uh, was on Ali San, she, she would be stupid powerful. Like, very stupid. So, her first skill is 10 hits of sadly not that good damage, and the last hit is, okay, d decent enough damage. Uh, directly ahead, and you can move while attacking. So let's say they're running. You can follow them. <laughs> but then her buff skill is increase user strength by 10-15% for 15 seconds. Normal attacks have a 15% chance to reduce enemy defense by 5% for 5 seconds. That is still really, really good because you're still getting a, a buff, meaning that uh, you'll be hitting harder. But that defense reduction, that is very, very valuable. For, for for like 15 seconds, whatever hit you're doing, defense reduction. It's <laughs> it's very powerful. Very powerful. Um th once again, that is the reason why people were able to clear the the uh one main objective as well as as well as being able to sound upon their dragons very often. Um, I will be getting into that into another video. I don't know if I'll do that video next or the day after. I have I have yet to uh, decide a placement on these videos, but definitely uh, definitely a DPS first. Um, uh, looking at her stats really quickly. Um, she has four seventy seven HP, so she's a very good HP tank. She can she can eat a hit, and that's why people are using her for the high uh, mid uh, mid guard trial. Is is because she's such an HP tank, and, and with the specific uh, wind print, uh, she's eating that first blast. 285 attack. That's still a pretty good attack. That's still pretty good. And now let's move on to uh, to the abilities. Um, increases the chance of dealing debuffs by 15 to 20% uh, when com when combo count is 15 or higher. This is this will be very easy to obtain because of her first skill. Her first skill deals off 11 hits. 
and you then only need like four more hits, but then, but but then but then from there, no matter what you have, um, until that combo resets, um, that fifteen percent chance on your on on your defense debuff, that is that is becoming thirty five percent when that skill is maxed out. That's very good because well, defense reduction is very valuable once again. And next ability uh, reduces the chance of sleep by 50 to 100%. That's very good for this next raid. That's very good. So, <laughs> definitely work her up. Definitely work her up. She is definitely a very good second option, once again. And increases damage to enemies and break state by 25 to 30%. Even more damage, better DPS. Then the co ability increases critical rate by 5, 7. Uh, I, I missed a number. 5, 6, 7, 8, and 10 percent. That is very, very good because, in, because imagine this, right? Imagine this, all right? All right? You can, you can have Mikoto for your DPS role, but then you can have Ezolith being your defensive reduction role. So, so this would mean you are getting a critical rate Co ability as well as a strength co ability. That is very good, very good, especially because of uh, Mikoto's already existing double double crit crit rate buffs. Uh, Mikoto will be critting like a madman. He will become a crit machine. DPS, very fast attacks. That's why he's so stupid in the game. That's why he's so stupid. Very solid unit, very solid, serves more than one purpose, which is not a bad thing, because she can serve both roles very well, but my one thing about her is that I honestly wish that, I honestly wish that that chance of debuff was a little higher, because 35% isn't, isn't exactly in your favor. Sure though, it will proc a good couple times, but it's not exactly in your favor just if, um, just if you don't play her correctly and, and make her survive. So that's my ending thoughts. And, and then the next one is actually a 3 star unit. She, okay, when, when I was looking over potential fire units for DPS, this caught me off guard. She has an 878% skill damage skill. That's ridiculous. As a three star, she's getting that. Ooh. Then the 280 attack? That's only five under Ezolith. And she's a three star. There is not much of a difference between three stars and five stars. Every unit can be used in their own way. That's what I love about this game. However, though, three stars, you will obviously need to work them up a little bit more. You will need more Eldwater. But it ju it's just mind-blowing at how powerful some of these units can be. It's just... Mm. So, are we looking at the HP and, 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 and attack? She doesn't have as, as much HP as, like, Ezolith or Mikoto. But her attack is right there, though. Her attack is right there. So, she'll serve more of a role as a glass cannon. So, just if you have her, and, and are wanting uh, to use her, definitely be wary with her, alright? Alright, um, she will, um, she will pretty much be a nut tap away from, from just dying. So be very careful with her. But, but the amount of skill damage she rewards is very good. One hit of up to 870% fire damage to, to surrounding enemies. Very powerful, it, it will, it will be a one hit nuke. Very fast too. But then uh, one hit of up to 790 fire damage AoE in in a line. Still 790, very powerful. Um, just so you guys remember, in my Halloween video, um, I was talking about of how Edward, uh, uh, uh the three star butler, uh, of how of how his of how his multipliers were also very high. That's not a first time thing, apparently. <laughs> But then, uh, just if we were to move on to the abilities, um, increases damage to enemies in the overdrive state by 5-8%. That's very good, because, because most of the time they will be in the overdrive state. So, so, so she'll be doing more damage. She will consistently be doing, like, 5-8% more damage with, with the, with the already, 
almost 800-900% multipliers. With a very good attack stat. That's a- that, that's amazing. But then, but then are two abilities, I'm just going to combine into one. 75% sleep resistance. 75%? It's better than nothing. It's honestly better than nothing. That's where three stars lack. They have repeating abilities. I don't like that, but but 75% sleep resist will still be very nice uh, for for this for this um upcoming raid. Even the co ability is stupid. Increases strength by one, two, three, four, or five percent. She busts her own strength too. Ha <laughs> ha. So so uh, just if you don't have a Mikoto, you can still use her in order to buff uh, the um everyone's um attack. So, overall thoughts, if I, if I get her, and I think I did, I might, I, I might try to work her up for something, eventually, but she's a very good unit, she's a very good unit, on paper at least. Once again, seems like a glass can, so be wary with her. And, and the final uh, DPS unit that you guys should try and run is actually another 3 star. <laughs> Still very stupid. So comparing uh, these two, she has slightly more HP and slightly less attack. Um, she has she has a couple more points in HP and a couple less in, in attack, but it's only like four points. It's only like a four point difference. She is still going to hit very hard. And once again, she has a like almost nine hundred percent a AOE fire attack, th then a eight hundred percent AOE fire attack being her first and second skill, respectively. She is still going to be a very good DPS, but then, he, but then, in order to follow up on that, her first ability is increase attack skill damage by 15 to 20%. She is buffing her skill percentages even more. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous, I love that. But then, but then, well, uh, once again, a uh, stun resist of 75%. Uh, uh, that will not come into effect uh, for this raid, but for, uh, but for another raid that can come into full effect. Still very nice. But, but, but then the co ability. <laughs> Increase attack skill damage by 2, 3, 5, 6, or 8%. So, not only can she get a 15 or 20% or attack skill damage buff. She gets another one from her co-ability. So yeah, so that 895% on her first skill, that's becoming very powerful. So um, uh, overall thoughts? Very good. She's also very good. All these units, they're all good in their- they, they all serve similar roles. So uh, just to run all this out, just if you have this guy, run him instantly. He he will he will become your best DPS for a good while until one, un, until one um outranks him. But because he's katana, uh, because he can increase his attack rate, his co ability boosts strength and abilities boost crit. I don't think he'll be dethroned for a good while. Pull him, you're set for a long while. Um, her she serves two roles. Um, DPS and defense is debuffer. Just if um, um, a lot of people should have her, so definitely try and work her up. She'll be your second best option. But then these two are honestly interchangeable. But I can see her being used more because of her co ability increasing attack skill damage versus versus her, which is strength that Mikoto already does. So I so a potential team of pure DPS that you could do is is a uh, is a uh, Mikoto, Ezolith, and Xania. That's a potential d DPS option right there. But I would not run Xania in that last slot. Well, mm, you could, you could for the sole purpose of the co ability. But in the upcoming videos, I will be doing more stuff on on other roles a team should have. So, thank you for watching. Uh, be sure to subscribe in order to keep up to date with the other two videos. Um, I'll be trying to post them daily. 
Uh, depends on uh, when I get around to editing and photoshopping. When the raid comes out, I'll try to keep as much up to date with it as I can on content. And also, showcases are on the way. I am just trying to figure some stuff out right now. I'm, I'm, trying, to, I'm trying to figure out a format for it. It's honestly a little on the difficult side. But I think I'll manage. I think I'll manage. Uh, drop a like uh, ju just if uh, you enjoyed it. Um, subscribe uh, for more videos. And best of luck in the raid. And peace.